As nurses, you need to take a leadership role in establishing protocols regarding this issue. Gather together security personnel, administrators, risk managers, and others who will be involved in this process. Perform a vulnerability assessment of your maternity unit as a team. We're taught to be nurses and we have leadership skills in that area. But we also need to take ownership of new protocols as they evolve and this program helps us to do that. I know that as a nurse I have a set of responsibilities to provide the best nursing care for my patients. I personally feel that part of that is providing the best safety for my patients. I'll do everything I can possibly do to make sure that my babies are safe. We have to be alert for unusual behavior. As an OB nurse, we are so geared toward caregiving that we tend to have on rose tinted glasses and we're not as suspicious as we need to be. So we really have to be taught that. We're good at physical assessments like reading blood pressures and heart rates and things like that, but not necessarily good at reading the signs that someone might be a potential abductor. As nurses, we need to trust our intuition. If it doesn't feel right, we need to ask more questions. In our training, we have been taught to really listen to what a person is asking you about the infant or the mother. In addition to your leadership in preventing abductions, the best patient protection comes from a multidisciplinary approach, including hospital security, risk management, and administration. It may require changes to your unit and your practices. You also need to be ever aware of the hospital's liability in certain areas. There is no one solution to infant security. I wish there was, it would be easier. There's multiple solutions and it's different depending on the unique nuances of your own hospital or healthcare institution. Though it's not a frequent occurrence, the impact of an infant uh, security problem, God forbid an abduction, is intense probably not measurable by any standards. It affects people for a very long time, even if an, in, if an infant is recovered and everything is fine, which is often the case. Uh, it's very, very important, therefore, that there is a multidisciplinary approach, that people are diligent and, and cognizant of what the philosophy is, what the program is all the time, that clinical staff on the units and other staff that reside on the units, environmental services, social workers, other people, work closely, team together with police and security so that they are one un united group working together toward a common goal, and that goal is to keep infants safe. Obviously, the security role is manifest louder and larger in that regard. The cl clinical staff, their first priority is taking care of mothers, babies, making sure people are healthy and that this is a beautiful experience for all. It is always a balance. It's never easy to think about how to approach this from a posture of wanting to educate people who may not have any idea that crimes of this horrific nature occur, not wanting to scare them, not wanting them to live in fear, but wanting them to be alert and aware as part of their job so that it never goes unnoticed if someone is in the unit that shouldn't be, if someone has said something that causes some concern, if uh, someone happens to be taking pictures, if someone's trying to piggyback, if someone is looking at security systems with a little too much interest, etc., etc. It's incredibly important that the program that you design is thought out and that's right and that it's prudent. That doesn't mean that you have to spend a fortune, but it means that you have to think about this as being an important investment, that it's a risk that is not necessarily a frequent or probable risk, but the impact is enormous. And best practices, even moderate practices, dictate that you have a multi-dimensional infant security program that involves technology, that involves very well-trained staff, that involves good protocols, procedures, signage, ID badges, education, etc. Some of those things don't cost any money except some time. But it's very important that you think about what makes sense in your environment, what other people are doing, not that you should only do what other people are doing, but what you've seen as a best practice out there, what you're seeing works in other places, what people in expertise who have expert positions may be telling you, I feel there's nobody that cares more about the babies in our hospitals than the nurses that care for them. We are grateful to them each and every day for all they do. They know this population. They understand it. 
Uh, they understand the parents' needs better than any of us. We need to listen to them. We need to be mindful and respectful of the challenges on their plates to try to make their job as easy as it can be. They know what's going to make sense for the parents of these patients and for what happens after the patients leave here. There are liability issues attached to every one of these infant abduction cases. One of the problems that's a nightmare is the PR that accompanies them. There's a real benefit in using the media as your ally. After all, remember, the media is the one thing that will help us find that baby, return it to you, and therefore to its mother. We need to keep open communications with the families. Despite the threat of lawsuits, communications have to flow. We need to have easy access to psychological support services for the family, needless to say, for the other patients on the maternity unit, and for all the staff involved in the care of that baby and that mother. All of us on a maternity unit need to constantly be evaluating our unit safety. Hopefully, this will help you spot potential problems before they flare up. With what you've learned, let's look again at that scenario. I will see you in the morning. All right, bye. Hi. Hi. He's right, Holly. You need your rest. Mm -hmm. How you feeling? Good. Good. Pain okay? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm All right. Well, I'll take Jacob back to the nursery for you, okay? Get him all settled in. Sleep well. Okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? We can't carry babies. I was just helping the mom. I'm going to need to see your ID. What was the difference in the outcome? The nurse notices that the baby is being carried. The nurse takes an active role. She's engaged. The nurse prevented this abduction. The difference is you nursing. Hey! Hi! How are you? What are you doing here? I was just out and about and I just wanted to stop by and see how you both are doing. Oh, well, all right. Well, come on in. Have a seat. Okay, great. I just got the baby down for a nap. It's been a bit of a rough morning. Oh, yeah? How is my little baby? Um, she's really good. She's good. She's been a good baby, and, you know, we've just been so blessed. Absolutely. She is definitely a blessing. Yeah. You must be really tired. Yeah, it is tiring having a new baby. Um, you know, especially at the early stages when they really don't sleep very much throughout the night. Yeah. But she looks great to me. <laughs> well, she's being really good right now. <laughs> don't let her fool you, though. Maybe it's just because I'm here. Well, can I get you a drink or anything? Um, yeah. Actually, can I use your bathroom really quick, if you don't mind? Sure. It's right through that door over okay, there. Thanks. I'll get you some water and set her down for a minute. for you. What are you doing? I'm taking the baby. What do you mean? I'm taking my baby. Over the past 25 years in the United States, the most common form of infant abductions are from hospitals. In addition, there have been an average of three to four infants abducted from homes. The perpetrator is going to come to your hospital on your unit to find a baby. Hopefully she won't be able to take the baby from your unit. She'll befriend the mother with a clear intent to abduct her baby from the home. Our responsibility is to help parents keep their baby safe and secure after they go home. Nursing staff needs to educate parents that using birth announcements, whether in the newspaper or on a website, is not advised. 
Putting up signs and balloons in the yard to announce the birth of their child is also not advised. We have been able to document cases of abductors using birth announcements to target a specific baby and take that child from the home environment. Parents should also be informed that they should never leave their baby with someone that they know casually or a perfect stranger. And if they're considering having someone babysit their child, they need to do complete background checks. In our discharge teaching, we tell mothers if a home health nurse is scheduled to visit them and remind the mother that the home health nurse should be identified. Don't let your guard down just because you're at home. Again, the reason you need to be concerned about a home abduction is that it starts on your unit. So the key to preventing abductions, both in the home and your hospital, is education. Think of our program, Safeguard Their Tomorrows, as a 20-year partnership between caregivers, between nurses and moms, together safeguarding our babies.